Do you file your taxes on time but still find yourself receiving notice from the income tax department? It's not an uncommon scenario. Over 12 lakh tax filers have been asked to provide additional information by the IT department. In fact, the finance minister had mentioned a few months ago that 1 lakh notices were sent in cases where people have either not declared their income or have underreported income. Now, why does this happen? Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Vishwajit Sonagra, founder at Quico, India's leading tax filing platform. And today I'll help you understand what is an income tax notice, different types of income tax notices you might receive, common mistakes people make leading to these notices, and most importantly, what to do when you receive a tax notice. So without further ado, let's get started. What is an income tax notice? First of all, an income tax notice is a written communication sent by the income tax department to a taxpayer, alerting them to an issue with their income tax return. Now don't mix up a notice with an intimation. An intimation is meant to provide you with an update on the status or outcome of your ITR. And in most cases, you don't need to take any action. On the other hand, a notice requires you to act on it. For instance, if you diligently file your ITR and expect a refund, an intimation might inform you that you have a refund for assessment year 23-24. No need to act on this. It is merely confirming that your ITR has been processed and a refund is on the way. But if there are inaccuracies in your ITR, like missing information or selecting the wrong ITR form, the assessing officer or the AO will issue a notice asking you to rectify these issues. Clear so far? Great. Let's move on to the six common types of income tax notices you might encounter. First and one of the most common notices is the inquiry notice under section 142.1. Don't worry, you need not remember the names of the sections at all. The objective here is to understand why and in what cases a particular notice is sent. The notice is sent when someone hasn't filed an ITR or when tax authorities need you to provide documents like proof of deductions. Next is notice for defective return under section 139.9. If the AO deems that the return filed by you is defective, he'll send you a notice under this section. For starters, when some important information is missing or reported wrongly on the tax return, it is known as a defective tax return. A common example of a defective tax return is when there is a calculation error leading to a mismatch between income reported in the ITR and data from sources like AIS and Form 26 AS. Third type of notice is the assessment or reassessment notice under section 148. This notice arrives when the AO believes you have filed your ITR with lower income or have failed to disclose all your income sources. Fourth is notice for demand under section 156. Under this notice, the income tax department may ask you to make additional payment for taxes, interest, penalties, or fines you are liable for. The notice specifies the amount and the due date typically 30 days from receiving it. Next is notice under section 143.2 for scrutiny assessment under section 143.3. The notice under section 143.2 is issued when your ITR is selected for scrutiny assessment or detailed assessment. The scrutiny assessment means the tax authorities will carry out a thorough examination of your ITR to confirm the correctness of claims and deductions. And lastly, intimation under section 245. This is issued to inform you that tax authorities are adjusting your previous year's outstanding tax liability with the current year's refund. So that's it with the different type of notices. Now let's explore the typical mistakes people make that can result in receiving one of these notices. Since most of us are either investors or traders, we'll cover cases specific to them. Later, I'll also tell you other cases which apply to everyone in general. Okay? First up, not reporting transactions mentioned in the AIS. AIS or the Annual Information Statement provides a comprehensive overview of taxpayers' financial details, including incomes, transactions, and tax-related information. It allows you to verify if your understanding of your incomes, expenses, and taxes align with that of Income Tax Department. Hence, it is crucial to ensure that the information in the AIS matches with your ITR. For instance, if the AIS indicates you earn Rs. 5,000 in dividend income, but you didn't declare them in your ITR, 
you might receive a notice from the IT department. Number two, improper classification of capital gains. Investors often incorrectly calculate the tax liability on the capital gains. Common examples include treating gains from selling units of debt mutual fund as equity gains and categorizing short-term capital gains as long-term capital gains. Number three, incorrectly categorizing intraday and FNO trading profits as IFOs. Profits from intraday and FNO trading are categorized as business income. If you place these profits under income from other sources, you could receive a notice. Number four, not declaring referral income or commission. Many people earn referral income from their stockbrokers and failing to declare this income in the ITR could result in a notice as these details are recorded in the Form 26AS or AIS. Number five, not reporting your foreign assets. If you have invested in foreign equity shares or received ESOPs while working at an MNC not listed in India, you must disclose these assets in the Schedule FA section of your ITR form. Failure to do so may lead to a notice and a penalty of up to Rs 10 lakh for each year of non-disclosure. Number six, wrongly adjusting losses under improper income head. This one's important. That's why we have made this table for you. Look at the first row here. Long-term capital losses can only be set off against long-term capital gains, while short-term capital losses can be set off against both short-term and long-term capital gains. One more thing, FNO trading is categorized as non-speculative business. These losses can be offset against all income heads except salary in the current year. On the other hand, intraday trading comes under speculative business and these losses can only be offset against other speculative business gains. Seven not doing audit when applicable. If you have business income, which is possible if you are actively engaged in FNO and intraday trading, then under certain conditions, you will be required to conduct an audit. There are few ifs and buts, and this in itself could be a separate video altogether. And in the interest of time, we have created this table for your reference, and you can take a screenshot of this table. In case you need a detailed video on this, let us know in the comments. Number eight not filing ITR when you have incurred losses. A very common question that people, especially traders and investors often ask, is whether they need to file an ITR if they've incurred losses in a particular financial year. The answer is yes. Filing your ITR, even when you have incurred losses, not only ensures compliance with the IT department, but also allows you to carry forward and offset these losses against any future gains, thus reducing your tax liability. A few other general cases could be when there is a mismatch between the TDS credits claimed in your tax return and the amount reflected in your Form 26 AS. Or you might also receive an email or a notice from the ITD in case you have failed to file the ITR at all. Keep in mind that the ITD has something called as non-filers monitoring system, which gathers data from various sources to identify and monitor people who have done high value transactions or have potential tax liabilities, but have still not filed their income tax return. Now, if you do receive a tax notice, what should you do? Let's understand. Before we explore what to do after receiving a notice, it's essential to know where to find it. When you receive a notice, the income tax department will notify you via your registered email address or mobile number. In the case of an email, you might receive a password protected PDF document containing the notice details. The password will typically be your PAN in lowercase, followed by your date of birth in DD, MM, YYYY format. Alternatively, you can also log into the ITD portal and click on pending actions. Here you can find a notice or intimation under either e-proceedings or a response to outstanding demand. If a notice doesn't require you to make a text payment, it stays in e-proceedings. But if demand, which means you need to make a payment, the notice will be in the response to outstanding demand section. Once you locate the notice in either of these two sections, you will need to respond to it. You can respond to notice in two ways. Either agree with the notice and if there is an additional tax liability paid or disagree with the notice. You can disagree either fully or partially. If you fully disagree, select the reason for the disagreement and add remarks. If you partially disagree, enter the sum to which you agree select the reason for disagreement, add remarks and save. Lastly, you can file a revised ITR 
in response to a notice if you want the ITD to consider updated information, effectively ignoring the original ITR. And if you realize you have made a mistake after filing your ITR, why even wait? Instead, promptly file a revised ITR. So we have tried to address most of the questions that we receive about text notices. Please feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more text related content. Until next time, this is Vishwajit signing off.